In this video, we're going to take a look at ions. When you see the word atom and even compound, it implies that it's neutral. But atoms can gain or lose electrons, and then they be can become positively or negatively charged, and then we call it an ion. So in an atom, you have equal numbers of protons and electrons. In an ion, that's no longer true. So if you have gained electrons, since electrons are negative, and they now outnumber the positive protons, you would end up having a negative charge charge, um, and sometimes we call these negative ions anions. If an atom loses electrons, the electrons, remember, are negative, now your positive protons outnumber the electrons and you would have a net positive charge, and we call these positively charged ions cations. So I know sometimes it sounds counterintuitive, if you gain something it becomes a negative, but because electrons are negative, gaining them gives you a net negative charge. So how do you know if, um, if you have an atom or an ion? So if you have an ion, if there is a charge, in the notation it's going to be written in the top right hand corner. So again, if you see positive, that means you've lost electrons. If you see a plus two, that means you've lost two electrons. If you see a plus one, you've lost one electron. And it's common notation that you don't have to put a one in, so you can just put positive if it's a one plus. And often the number comes before the charge, so two plus instead of plus two. If you were to write notation and you wrote plus two, that's totally fine as well. But a lot of times when you see notation written for you, the number will come before the charge. Okay, and you can have a negative charge. Remember, negative means electrons are gained because electrons are negative. If you've gained one, you'd have a one minus charge. You don't have to write the one in. And if you've gained two, you'd have a two minus charge. And I just put A for whatever the symbol of the element is. You would use the number of protons to look up what the symbol is. Um, so let's do some practice, and you might want to take a moment to pause the video um, and try these on your own first, and then check your work. Um, You'll notice on the left-hand side I gave you the atom, and now I'm giving you an ion. It now has a charge. So the atom's neutral, the ion now has a charge. Tell me how many protons and electrons are in the atom, and then tell me how many protons and electrons are in the ions. Now let's check our work. So if I look at magnesium on the periodic table, okay, here's the box where it looks like, it has an atomic number of 12. Don't forget that there's always that little key on your periodic table if you forget what these numbers mean. Um, I think on your periodic table it's like the bottom left-hand corner, um, and it tells you what these numbers are. So this is the atomic number that gives you the number of protons. So in an atom, notice there's no charge in the top right-hand corner, there would be 12 protons and 12 electrons. Protons are positive, electrons are negative, they would cancel each other out, so it would overall be neutral, have zero net charge. Okay, Mg2+, plus. okay, to get that 2 plus charge, okay, I must have lost electrons. So the protons are still the same, right? I don't want to change the protons because if I were to lose protons, this would no longer be Mg. So remember that atomic number has to stay the same. Um, and I can now have two less electrons. There would be 10 electrons. Notice that I have two more protons and electrons, and that's why I have a 2 plus charge overall. Okay, let's look at this one. Arsenic, AS, if I were to look it up, it has an atomic number of 33, so there's 33 protons and 33 electrons in the atom. Now it has a charge. I don't want to change the number of protons because it's still AS, meaning it still has an atomic number of 33, so there should still be 33 protons. If I change the protons, it would no longer be AS. But the electrons can change, and that's why it has a net charge. It has a charge of 3 minus, so that means I must have 3 more electrons than protons. It gained 3, so there's now 36 electrons. Let's look at Fe iron. It has an atomic number of 26, so in the atom with no charge, protons and electrons are equal, so I have a net charge of 0. Fe2+, plus, okay, I would still have 26 protons because it's still Fe. The protons are what identifies the element. And now I have a 2 plus charge, so I must have lost 2 electrons. There's 24 electrons, and that's why there's a 2 plus charge because there's 2 more protons than electrons giving it an overall positive charge. Whereas Fe3+, plus, again, same number of protons, but the electrons are now 23. It's lost three electrons. There's three more protons than electrons, and that's why it has a 3-plus charge. 
Okay, so remember the ions have the same number of protons as the atom, but a different number of electrons depending on the charge. And just as we did here, if you're struggling with any examples, it might help to first think about the atom, find the number of protons and electrons, and then either subtract or add electrons um, to the atom as we did here. So sometimes if you are struggling with it, think about the atom first, where protons and electrons are equal, and then take away or add electrons as needed to form the ion. Okay, take a moment, try this example, pause the video, and then check your work. Give the chemical symbol, include mass number, um, for an ion with 29 protons, 35 neutrons, and 27 electrons. So feel comfortable, if given the subatomic particles, to write the symbol. Okay, so remember it's the protons that identify the element. So if I look on the periodic table, 29, that is the atomic number for copper. So this is a copper, um, copper is the identity of this. This is not an atom, it's an ion. Um, it mentions ion and also notice that the protons and electrons are not equal. So this will have a charge to it. If I want to get the mass number, that adds the protons and neutrons together. Okay, so to get the mass number, I add 29 protons and 35 neutrons, and I get 64. And remember, we do not look up the mass number on the periodic table. This is called atomic mass on the periodic table. It might be close to our mass number. It might not be. This atomic mass is really an average of all the possible mass numbers for copper, and whatever the um, whatever whole number essentially is closest to this atomic mass is the most abundant or common isotope. So 64 might be a relatively common isotope. Um, and then to get the charge, we're just looking at the difference in protons and electrons. Notice that there are two more protons than there are electrons, so this would have a two plus charge. This must have lost two electrons from it. It would have started at 29 electrons if this were an atom, but it now has 27. So to write the, um, the symbol, you put the element symbol. Remember that mass number goes in the top left-hand corner, so that's the 64. If you want, I didn't include it, but you could put atomic number in the bottom left-hand corner. 29 and you put the charge in the top right hand corner 2 plus and if you wrote plus 2 that's fine but typically I'll put the number and then the charge take a moment try this example pause your work and then uh, pause the video and then check your work okay 34 protons identifies the element so that's selenium I can get the mass number by adding protons and neutrons together Okay, so 34 plus 45 gives me 79. This must be a common isotope because it is close to the atomic mass, but remember I don't look up mass number, I just add protons and neutrons. And the fact that there's 36 electrons, if this were a neutral atom, there would be 34 electrons because that's how many protons there are, so this gained two, so this has a two minus charge. There are two more electrons than protons. Electrons outnumber the protons by two, so that's a two minus charge. When I'm writing the symbol, SE would go in the middle. Um, 79, the mass number goes top left. If I wanted to, I could put 34 bottom left for the um, atomic number, and 2 minus the charge goes in the top right. Take a moment and try this example, which goes the opposite way. If given the symbol, feel comfortable getting the numbers of subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Pause the video, check your work. Okay, so aluminum tells me that there are 13 protons, because I can look up the atomic number. Okay, I can take the mass number, which is 27, and I can subtract out the number of protons, 13, to get the neutrons. I get 14 neutrons. Remember that the neutrons themselves are not written anywhere in the symbol, but I can subtract to get them. And I can get the number of electrons by taking account for the charge. So if there are 13 protons um, in an atom, there would be 13 electrons if it were neutral, but this is an ion. So the 3 plus tells me that I've lost 3 electrons, so I now have 10 electrons. Okay, take a moment, try this example. Each, um, each atom or ion represents a row. Tell me the number of protons, neutrons, electrons, and tell me whether this is an atom or an ion. Um, different rows have different things missing. Take a moment, try it, and then pause the video and check your work. So 80, BR85, okay, 85 remembers the mass number. If I look at BR, it has 35 protons. The neutrons I get via subtraction, 85 minus 35 I get. Uh, 50. And since this is an atom, notice there's no charge in the top right hand corner. The number of electrons would be the same as the protons, 35. This is an atom, no charge. Okay, notice this one, there is a charge. These two here are ions. Uh, number of protons I get looking up aluminum on the periodic table, 13. Number of neutrons I get via subtraction, 20 minus 13 is 7. Remember that I'm not looking up the mass number. I'm finding the mass number here and subtracting out the protons. So this 20 might be different than the atomic 
atomic mass in the periodic table, and that's okay. I'm using what's written in the symbol. Electrons are no longer the same as protons because there's a three plus charge. There'd be 10 electrons because I've lost three electrons. I have three more protons than electrons, and this is an ion because there's a charge. In this one, is, again, this is an ion. Um, as I look it up, it has 16 protons. That's the atomic number. I can get um, neutrons via subtraction, the mass number that's given in the symbol, 30 minus 16, and I get 14. The, um, I have gained two electrons because there's a two minus charge, so I no longer have 16, which would have been in an atom. I gained two, so I have 18, and this is an ion. Here I'm giving you protons and neutrons so I can add these together to get the mass number, which will go into the symbol, and I can use the protons to look up the atomic number. It's calcium. Okay, I'm telling you it's an atom, so I don't have to write a charge, and therefore the number of electrons will be the same as protons. Okay, here, notice that this is not an atom because the protons and electrons are different. There's one more proton than electron, so this must have a plus charge. The fact that there's 11 protons tells me it's sodium, and I can add protons and neutrons together to get the mass number of 23. This is an ion. And this one, okay, this is an ion. Um, CL, I can look it up. It has 17 protons because it's the atomic number. 17 from, uh, subtracted from 37 gives me 20 neutrons. Um, if this were an atom, there would also be 17 electrons, but it's not. It has a 1 minus charge. I've gained 1 electron, so I have 18. And again, this is an ion. Okay, metals are on the, so on your periodic table you have this bold staircase and metals are on the left of the staircase. Um, so notice there's way more metals on the periodic table than non-metals. They're on down here as well. Um, so you should know that the left of the staircase is metals except for hydrogen, which is a non-metal. And the right of the staircase is non-metals. Along those bold staircase you have things called metalloids that kind of have properties of both. Um, uh, the metals form positive ions, they lose electrons. Nonmetals form negative ions, they gain electrons. Okay, so take a moment and do this for practice. Determine if these elements are metals or nonmetals. Based on that, tell me if they would form a positive or negative ion. Remember, metals form positive and nonmetals form negative ions. And while you're at it, just for practice, name the element. Pause the video, try it, and then check your work. Okay, so K is a metal. Therefore, it forms a positive ion, that's potassium. Cl is a nonmetal, it's to the right of the staircase. It forms a negative ion, so it's, and it's named chlorine. Iron's to the left, so it's a metal and would form a positive ion, it's called iron. N is a nonmetal because it's on the right of the staircase, it would form a negative ion, we call that nitrogen. Cu is copper, it's a metal, and therefore it forms a positive charge. I is iodine, it's to the right of the staircase, so it's a nonmetal and would form a negative ion. Aluminum is a metal, and it's to the left of the staircase, so it would form a positive ion. Okay, so why do metals form positive ions and nonmetals form negative ions? So essentially, most of these elements are trying to get the same number, number of electrons as the noble gases. So the noble gases are the last column on the periodic table, group number 18, or column number 18. They're very unreactive because their electron configuration is very stable, so they don't tend to gain or lose electrons, and therefore they don't tend to react. So there's this thing called the octet rule, which we'll explain a little more when we get to valence electrons, but atoms tend to gain, lose, or share electrons to achieve the same number of electrons at the closest noble gas on the periodic table. Um, so we can actually use this to predict the charge that the main group elements will have as ions. When I say main groups, I'm typically not looking at the elements way in the middle or the bottom. Um, so again, remember, here's that bold staircase on your periodic table. The left are metals, the right are nonmetals. Um, and this last column we call the noble gases. So elements are trying to gain or lose electrons to become like the noble gases. Um, and that's why, okay, like here are nonmetals, fluorine, has an atomic number of nine. That means it has nine protons, nine electrons as an atom. It wants to um, gain one more so that it can have 10 electrons like the nearest noble gas. So that's why this column here um, typically will form a one minus charge and why nonmetals tend to gain electrons. Whereas your metals, okay, let's look at sodium, has 11 protons, 11 electrons if it's an atom. The nearest noble gas, if it loses one electron, it can um, take the same number of electrons as neon. So those would form positive ions. Okay, look at it another way. Okay, here's my noble gases. Notice all of these in from group 17. 
they all want to gain one electron, so this group will form a minus one to be like the nearest noble gas. The group before that, notice they all form two minus charge. They want to gain two electrons to be like the nearest noble gas. The group before that, three minus, gain three electrons to be like the nearest noble gas. Okay, and then some of these here in group 14, you could say, okay, that could be plus four or minus four, depending um, if it's a metal or non-metal, could kind of be the same going either way. Okay, but here group one would lose one electron, group two would form a two plus, lose two electrons, 13, three plus. Notice I skipped the middle of the periodic table. These are showing what's called the main group elements. Okay, so you can, you, we can indicate the charge of the ion form. So essentially group one's gonna form one plus, group two's gonna form two plus, skipping over the middle. Okay, this would form a three plus. Then you get to this column, it could be plus or minus four, depending the, the non-metals on top, or to the right of the staircase. Um, they're gonna form negatives. The uh, ones on the bottom would tend to form positives. Okay, but this group would be three minus, this group two minus, this group one minus, and the noble gases wouldn't form charges because they don't react. What's great um, about your periodic table is if you turn to the back of it, you can see all of these charges predicted for you. Notice group 17, 1 minus, group 16, 2 minus, group 15, 3 minus, except for the metals that might be on the bottom there um, because we've had said metals form positive charges. Notice group 1 is plus 1, group 2 is plus 2. I said we're skipping over the middle because you'll notice that they form multiple charges, like cobalt can form 2 plus or 3 plus, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Okay, so, but for now, let's just look at the main groups. I want you to try this example, pause the video as needed, and then um, check your work. But for each of these, tell me the number of electrons. Okay, based on where it's located on the periodic table, try to predict what charge would form. You can also feel free to use the back of your periodic table to check your work. Um, and then tell me how many electrons are in that ion now that you've gained or lost electrons. Um, and you'll notice that the number of electrons should be, um, really the number of electrons is the nearest noble gas. Take a moment, try it, check your work. So nitrogen has seven electrons as an atom. It would form a three minus charge because it's in group 15. And now gained three electrons, it has 10 electrons, which you'll notice is the same number of electrons as the nearest noble gas, neon. Calcium as an atom would have 20 electrons. As an ion, it forms a two plus charge. It loses two electrons and now has 18 electrons, which is the same as the nearest noble gas, argon. Potassium has 19 electrons. It would form a one plus charge because it's in group one and it would now have 18 electrons since it lost one. Again, like the nearest noble gas, argon. So notice that some of these ions are now having the same numbers of electrons. Oxygens has, um, oxygen has eight electrons. It would form a two minus ion because it's in group 16. It wants to gain two to be like the nearest noble gas. And it would now have 10 electrons. It gained two and now it has the same number of electrons as neon. It, is, it has not turned into neon because it does not have the same number of protons as neon, but it does have the same number of electrons. Bromine has 35 electrons. It would form a one minus charge and therefore gain one electron to have 36 electrons and it would be like its nearest noble gas. Um, aluminum has 13 electrons. It would form a three plus charge and it now lost three electrons um, to form 10 electrons total like the nearest noble gas neon. And phosphorus has 15 electrons. It would form a three minus charge because it's in group 13, uh, group 15, excuse me. And it would now have three more electrons and have 18 electrons like the nearest noble gas argon. 